So in honor of the fact that I now now have a uh, high quality camera and microphone and no longer have to make 10 horrible videos, I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about pursuance and what it is and what it means and how you can use it for your own ends uh, as a participant. Uh, I'm going to briefly figure out how to broadcast this link on Twitter. I'm not sure I know how to do that. Um, I guess I can't. Never mind. Anyway, i uh, also be taking all of your questions, anybody who has questions about the pursuance system. So to start out, you can see the basic, both the basic and, and, and more nuanced uh, examples of pursuance and how it works and what it is at the website we maintain at pursuanceproject.org. Uh, uh, so to start off with, uh, pursuance is a sort of digital ecosystem. Uh, it's an online environment, visualized in a visualized sense, it's a visualized online environment that uh, participants will be able to access using this open source software. Now, as a participant of Pursuance, uh, you enter into this online ecosystem and you can create your own Pursuance. You can uh, apply to join Pursuances, but you can always create one as well. Uh, now, creating a Pursuance, uh, you can see some diagrams on pursuanceproject.org. Uh, so it's kind of, some of it's difficult to explain some of the visual nuances, but the bottom line is that you're, you're seeing this big field and all the participants are represented by spheres uh, of sorts. Uh, when you create a pursuance, imagine that as a cube that you're connected to. So you're this little sphere, you just built a pursuance. There's a little line between your sphere and this cube, which is the pursuance. So having created the pursuance, you are enti entirely in control of it at this point. Uh, you can decide you know, what it's for, uh, you can decide what your ethics are, what your protocols are going to be, uh, anything else, anything you like. Uh, attracting other users, uh, people who, attracting people to join the pursuance, uh, will often involve delegating powers. Often, you know, uh, people don't necessarily want to, uh, work for something that's entirely top down in which this person who creates it is in charge of everything and compartmentalizes information. Uh, and so a lot of pursuances, once they're created, will be, uh, the person who creates it will very quickly delegate their original powers uh, to others. And so you might, you'll see a pursuance, again, represented by a cube with three spheres running off of it. Uh, depending on the internal settings, that might mean that all three of those people have equal control of the pursuance. It might mean that uh, it requires a majority vote of two uh, to make any uh, major decision or minor decisions, however they set it up. And remember, there's, there's a uh, all number of ways in which to uh, arrange these things. It's very, very customizable. So uh, as a pursuance grows, uh, again, looking at the diagrams at pursuanceproject.org, you'll see that there's a number of shapes a pursuance can take based on you know, what it is, how it's comprised, uh, how large it is. Uh, so you're going to see pursuances that are, you know, essentially look like very complex molecules. Uh, as, and the individual molecules themselves made up of users may, be connect, may connect off to other pursuances at certain points. You'll see these little lines between the individual pursuances. That's where a pursuance has formally agreed to share information or resources or tactics or whatever. Uh, it's, they've created some, some sort of formal uh, alliance uh, in some way. And again, those can vary uh, very widely in nature. They can be very simple, just, you know, we share information about this. Uh, they may have agreed that we only engage in this kind of uh, conduct. We have this sort of ethical, uh, ethical protocol in place. Uh, it may mean that they make use of that each pursuance allows the other pursuants to use uh, internal participants, you know, who may be designers or coders, and uh, they share these resources. It may mean any number of other things. Uh, stepping back to look at the wider picture here, I want to explain why we have uh, pursuance designed the way that we do. Uh, with something like Anonymous or Project PM, which was my group back in the day that was uh, engaged in a crowdsourced investigation into uh, the intelligence contract industry, you generally had an IRC network or, or a couple IRC networks. And you have, hundred, you have you know, let's say 100 people who have joined that IRC network. You have a main channel, and that main channel, like with the non-ops, you're going to have a lot of activity going on there. People saying, oh, we have this operation coming up, join this other channel to participate. You're going to have debates. You're going to have discussions of, of ongoing events. You're going to have people, you know, sort of deciding: is this something that we should respond to? How should we respond to it? Who should be in charge? And that all uh, essentially can work out very well. 
this is this is a very uh, sort of free ranging, very loose setup, whereby you have people and you hope those people end up being, uh, you know, worth having in there. Uh, you have them all together. Their ideas can sort of get an airing very quickly. You're an IRC channel. You can say, hey, we should, you know, here's this thing going on. Here's a great way that we should respond to it. Here's an idea on that, you know, blah, blah. You have people who are designers. And uh, if somebody comes in from another channel, they're doing an operation to aid the Tunisian revolution, for instance, and they're asking, say, hey, we need, we're creating a digital uh, campaign. We need an art, we need an artist, we need a digital, digital artist, or we need a programmer. Uh, there may or may not, you know, be a programmer there and they can, you know, coalesce, you know, that way. So it's all very haphazard. Uh, it's again, very free and loose, haphazard. Uh, uh, obviously, as we've seen in real life, uh, this can this can work out very well. Uh, anonymous with its very uh, anarchic, amorphous setup uh, within these some of these servers, like Anonops, we're able to just because the people happen to be the right people, uh, you know, in place, we're able to pull off quite a lot of dramatic uh, activity. Uh, the problem is that that same uh, looseness, that same sort of haphazardness. Uh, allows for all kinds of um, friction, uh, to put it mildly. You have people coming in who are intelligence contractors or intelligence agents or FBI agents uh, monitoring the activities. You have some of them uh, seeking to disrupt these activities, uh, just like with Cointelpro, for instance. You also have people who are not uh, out to damage the operations, but who uh, shouldn't be there, uh, whose very presence, because they're maybe mentally unstable, they, they could be, uh, you know, maybe perhaps they are philosophically uh, opposed to large portions of everyone else and uh, are going to spend a lot of time uh, picking arguments on sort of inane topics. Uh, those kind of things are impossible to prevent, or impossible to ensure against if you have an entirely open system like that. It's like a cell with no membrane. And so, like a cell with no membrane, uh, you know, it can bring in nutrients, but it can also bring in disease. Uh, so that's a good way of looking at uh, why Anonymous did eventually deteriorate and sort of no longer exists as a viable entity now, uh, because there was nothing to prevent it from becoming unviable. There was nothing to stop uh, the noise from outweighing the signal. So pursuance is a way of trying to address those things, trying to take the crowdsourced uh, behaviors that we see with things like anonymous and take those successes and take that same agility, but make it rigorous, uh, make it, uh, you know, allow an exoskeleton to develop around these informal uh, networks of people uh, on which things like anonymous, uh, which they were comprised. Uh, so as you can see from the, again, the website, uh, if you've looked at that and the diagrams, you see how this works. Uh, you see every individual comes in has the right this the same equal right to proceed to create a pursuance and to apply to join pursuances no pursuance has to agree to bring on anybody who applies uh pursuances can be very exclusive but they can also be very uh open they, they can uh a person who creates a pursuance can delegate power uh to two people for instance and have one say one is in charge of research one is in part in charge of propaganda and basically give those people the rights to bring on people under them uh, in however way they like and so on and so forth. And so starting with the you know, person who creates it, you can have from there, you know, uh, secondary figures uh, hinging off there. Each of those can have the right to bring in, if they like, 100 people each under them. So you have these networks that expand geometrically. Uh, and that's okay. That's actually a viable option with pursuance because the default settings uh, are such that having large numbers of people uh, in this structure is not the same thing as having a, a, a thousand people in a chat room. Uh, first of all, these, everyone who, who brings on someone under them uh, or attaches to somebody has done so voluntarily. Uh, they can also cut off those attachments if they'd like. Uh, you have a, a filter system that comes out of this. You have... Uh, you have some structure whereby, uh, let's say you're doing crowdsource research. Let's say you're a journalist and you like the idea of crowdsource research. You like to use Twitter or whatever uh, to get ideas on a story or get story ideas to begin with from uh, just random people who, who want to contribute in that way. But when you do that, you also open the door for a lot of hassle. Uh, you have to sift through information. If you're successful at getting attention to your crowdsourced 
projects, you're going to have a lot of people sending you messages and so forth. Uh, a lot of the information you get is going to be noise. It's going to be uh, unusable. But with Pursuant System, a journalist, for instance, who, you know, a, a conventional journalist, let's say, who is not uh, generally interested in uh, taking on those kind of risks, uh, taking on those kinds of uh, potential risks when you deal with large numbers of people that you don't know, uh, can do it in a more structured way. They can choose, like, say, two people that they consider to be uh, reliable and have those two people each uh, under them bring on whoever they think is reliable and so on and so forth. Uh, at each level, you have information being submitted up through the network. Uh, but that information to get to the original journalist or whoever uh, has to be approved, has to be accepted by each person up there. And so you have an automatic filter being developed every time you build one of these large networks. And so the journalist himself, he's not having to sort through a thousand people's uh, opinions. You know, many of those people, you know, again, could be problematic in many ways. Anyone who's... Uh, you know, worked on the internet a great deal uh, and sort of exposed themselves to just whoever uh, wants to be involved, uh, knows that there are people who are so problematic that they can, uh, you know, deteriorate something like that very quickly. Uh, the journalists don't have to worry about that. That's all being dealt with, again, almost automatically in the sort of self-organized system under him. And so ultimately, he's getting those pieces of information that have been uh, sort of sorted through and uh, deemed useful and worthy by every single person up that network. Now, when you build something like that, then you run into your own problems. Uh, a large network like that, uh, it takes it can take a while if each person up the line has to approve something. It takes a while for information to get to that top. It can also, uh, you also run into problems where just like in a bureaucracy of any sort, any institution, where you have people at the outer margins who have just been brought on and who are thus, you know, in a way, you know, uh, uh, many, many items removed from the top where the information matters. There can be situations in which someone uh, knows something uh, worthwhile, but the person above them or, or a couple ranks above them uh, doesn't recognize the use of that. Uh, so we get around that, we have a default setting for pursuances. And this works just, not just in crowdsourced research as we're talking about now, but also with, uh, you know, with any other uh, organization in which you're trying to... Uh, harness ideas and assess ideas from large numbers of people. That setting is that anyone who joins a pursuance, and so if it's sitting on the outer network of this pursuance, they're, uh, you know, they're, they're 40 uh, pings removed from whoever created it or, or somebody in that pursuance who the information needs to get to. That person and every other person has the right when joining pursuance to send one message to anyone in that pursuance. It could be, you know, persons, going back to our example, the crowdsource journalist, Personal journalism, they can send a message to that journalist. Uh, and if that journalist or whoever, whoever that person sends a message to, finds that message worthwhile, and that message, again, that could be information that, that uh, is urgent, information that someone above doesn't uh, recognize the value of. It could be uh, information about a problem in the network, you know, of, of abuse of powers or just someone who's not working out. Uh, if that person who receives that message approves of it, uh, he can renew that person's right to send more messages in the future and so on and so forth each time. That way you do have, uh, although you still have detachments, you still have uh, people uh, arranged in a way that's not a chaotic uh, mass of everyone talking at once, but you also have a way of getting around the, the very traditional uh, problems that arise whenever you have a bureaucracy. And so uh, staying on this example, a journalist, and we do have some journalists and some organizations like Who, What, Why, who are uh, already signed up to use this. And it'll be interesting to see uh, how it works and how many people uh, volunteer to to sort of work on a pursuit on a journalist crowdsource network. Uh, this this is something that uh, we can show them doesn't present a lot of risk for journalists, even a risk of time being spent, or, you know, resources, you know, or trouble. Uh, this is something that can, you know, that for a journalist doing crowdsourced research, uh, you know, can provide them a sense of how these, how crowdsourced research is advantageous compared to the traditional model of having an editor and a journalist and a fact checker, maybe, uh, none of whom are necessarily familiar with the subject matter at hand. Uh, so those are some of the dynamics that come into play here. And as I've said, again, it's very difficult to, to go into uh, the specifics, since it's a very visual system involving structures, uh, which are going to differ from 
pursuance to pursuance. Uh, and so let me see if there's any questions yet. Will it be a sequence for remote neural monitoring and synthetic telepathy? Um, I guess if someone creates one, then yes. Uh, I should note on that on that note that uh, the way the pursuance is populated, uh, the way that it, the method that determines who's in it and what's being worked on and what's being done uh, is like this. We bring in... Like right now, we have over 1,600 people who have applied, uh, who have signed up on the website to be considered for, the, for participation. And when we launch in a few months, uh, some number of those people uh, will be accepted and brought in. And each of them will be able to create whatever pursuance they like for whatever function. They'll be able to uh, join or to apply to join whatever pursuance they would like to apply to join. Uh, if someone sees a pursuance that's doing something they like, but they're, it's set up in a way that's not democratic enough for them or that's uh, too democratic or too chaotic or uh, or whatever, they can create their own pursuance, of course, uh, pursuing that same goal uh, using an entirely different setup. Uh, so it's sort of it's more of a freedom of association kind of dynamic than it is a democracy dynamic. Although a pursuance, uh, individual pursuance, can set up uh, any number of democratic mechanisms to make decisions, as in a pursuance could have a sort of uh, a consulship at the top where there's three people who are, who are kind of in charge that... Uh, Serve as a check on on one another and have to uh, approve major decisions by majority vote, or pursuance can have a setup whereby every participant, no matter when they've been brought on or how far outside the margins, has a vote on any number of uh, categories of decisions, running from major to minor. Uh, it's all up to the people, the individuals themselves. Uh, that itself is a major uh, improvement over what we see uh, on the one hand with institutions, which are always uh, non-democratic in nature by their, by their very nature uh, on the one hand and on the other hand something like anonymous in which there is no mechanism uh, for decision making there's no real uh, charter or method by which a person can say hey we have the right to do this we have the right to do that and uh, etc this thing is all mechanism it's all mechanism uh, for uh, interpersonal collaboration so everyone who's involved in pursuance has joined that pursuance knowing full well what his rights and responsibilities are in that pursuance. Uh, there's never a point in which someone can say, what gives you the right to do this? Or, hey, we've decided we're going to take charge of this because you're not real anons, we're real anons, blah, blah, blah. We don't do that. None of that really exists here because at every step of the way, uh, these interconnections have happened voluntarily uh, with open eyes. And so it also that also allows for a lot of experimentation. It allows for someone, you know, uh, allows for a great deal of differentiation uh, and sort of, uh, you know, an ecosystem environment in which things are going to evolve, in which certain people are going to develop uh, better than usual methods for doing things, organizing things, and those will be adapted uh, more and more across the ecosystem. Um, so that's an important aspect as well. Let's see what else we should talk about. There's obviously a lot of, uh, there are both procedural kind of uh, issues here as to, uh, you know, what, what features exist, you know, is it, how well is it encrypted, you know, how will people run instances, and there's also sort of larger, more philosophical questions about uh, why this should be the case, and, and et cetera. And I could talk about it all day. Um, anybody have any questions at this point before I start talking about some other topic? Very well. Um, let's see. Oh, okay, so someone had asked about, you know, what kind of pursuances uh, will there be? Will there be this particular pursuances? Again, that's all. That's not up to us. That's up. That's although some of us will be creating pursuances within the system. Uh, the, the 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 composition of the pursuance system, the number and variety and uh, nature of pursuances will be up to the participants themselves. Uh, you know collectively. Uh, so, as I was saying earlier, we, we bring on some number of people who populate the system to begin with. Uh, as time goes on, each of them is able to bring on new participants. So if they know somebody, have an acquaintance, if they, there's someone they're aware of and they want to reach out and say, hey, do you want to be involved in the system? They have the ability to bring on some set number of new participants each month, and that's entirely up to them. Now, those people have been brought into the system and they had those same basic rights, but again, they still have to uh, 
either create their own pursuance or apply successfully to join one in order to be involved in a given uh, activity, given pursuance. So it, it, it can grow geometrically from there. Uh, and it also, uh, and it grows along the lines collectively of what each iteration of pursuance participants, uh, however, how they want it to grow based on who they bring in. It's a, uh, again, it's a very uh, again, crowdsourced uh, procedural sort of uh, process that populates this and determines the exact, uh, the exact demographics. Um, let's see if we have any questions besides that one. So to summarize the answer to that last question, there may very well be pursuance for that thing you've mentioned uh, if someone starts it, uh, and if not, they will not. Multi-level think tank. Yeah, that's there's 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 a number of ways to describe this that to kind of uh, a little bit you know simpler and, and more uh, efficiently than I've described it in the last ten minutes, and that's that's one of them. Another way uh, to think of it as again an ecosystem with organisms in it, and these organisms evolve uh, you know slowly over time. Uh, they can join together, just like in, in nature. We have uh, organelles that join together to become, or to become uh, uh, cells. It's not really very good. I didn't, I didn't state that correctly. Organelles become something else. Anyway, um, the best uh, metaphor we have for pursuing system is scaffolding. Uh, and this goes, this goes more to the politics of it. If you have a building that people agree something is wrong with, uh, it's not necessary for everyone to agree exactly what's wrong with it and what should be done in the end. Uh, it's not necessary for that for that to be achieved. What is necessary is that some number of people agree there's something wrong with it and then build scaffolding around that building. And there'll be some on that scaffolding who think that this entire top part should be removed. There'll be others who want the building itself to be sound over time, but they, want, but they agree that this renovation should occur over here or this brick should be taken out, or that this brick should be added. Uh, it's okay if they don't all agree on the long-term vision for the building. What they have to, what they can recognize though, is that they do overlap in much of what they want to see done. And so that scaffolding can be used for renovation, can be used for refurbishing, can be used to remove parts of it or build parts. It can also be used uh, with netting to prevent bricks from falling on the people below if that building, or in this case our political system, collapses, as it very well might. Uh, it would, you know, so we tell people that so they understand that you don't have to be an anarchist or, you know, a communist or a socialist or a Green Party member or a libertarian or anything else uh, to participate in the system. You have to simply agree that there is something wrong with the system. And then within the system itself, within our new system, within the pursuance system, uh, people are able to sort of organize uh, to uh, work on those issues that overlap. So to translate back into real world, into the U.S. scene, you have Green Party people, libertarians, uh, moderate Democrats, even some Republicans, uh, socialists, and all, all sorts of other things who all agree that the drug war is deleterious and that it should be uh, opposed. They don't have to agree on all these other issues to work together on this on this particular topic. And there's a number of other issues that uh, have similar dynamics, where you know libertarians and green party people both oppose uh, sort of corporate welfare. They both tend to oppose the police state. They both tend to oppose uh, you know any number of practices that are sort of developed that perhaps even the majority of Americans are opposed to, but because they're not working together efficiently to to uh, to get rid of these things, uh, they just don't disappear. Uh, the pursuance system kind of allows that to uh, more efficiently be be, be uh, done. Sorry, I've had my coffee yet today. Um, and so, you know, when you start looking a couple years down the road uh, after we launch and after some people have come in and brought in other people and, and uh, some of these organizations, some of these uh, think tanks and nonprofits uh, that we have signed up, and some of these uh, journalistic entities be using it. When they start using this actively, and when people see it being used and see how you know how the ways in which it can represent a more efficient uh, handling of things than our existing structures, uh, and more people join, 
when you have 40,000 people, individuals in this system, and you have a couple hundred NGOs and nonprofits and political advocacy groups uh, that all kind of agree on these shared values, that all agree on the open society, they agree uh, they're anti-surveillance, anti-police state, anti-drug war, and you give them these tools that we're giving them, and you give them the opportunity to develop, to experiment and develop new strategies and to share those strategies uh, within our data library, uh, you're going to see a uh, something uh, along the lines of what you saw with Anonymous and some of these other groups that were at their height back in 2011, but you're going to see that amplified vastly. You're going to see it all over the world. And you're going to see it uh, rather than, you know, achieving some dramatic successes and then kind of fading away, you're going to see these things growing stronger, uh, more nuanced, uh, more refined as time goes on. Again, very different from an institution, which, which being an institution, whatever, you know, whether it be a government, corporation, uh, bakery, you know, uh, is kind of static. As opposed to those things, this is something that is dynamic, that is, that is uh, somewhere between an institution and a movement, uh, taking the best aspects of both. Uh, those aspects, when we see these in play, when we see these information age uh, dynamics finally being harnessed, uh, after all these years, after all these years of disappointments and uh, manifestos and, and uh, false alarms, and et cetera, you're going to see fundamental change for the first time in your, in your lifetime. And something along these lines, whether it be the pursuant system or something else, something along these lines that do uh, pose the question and try to solve the problem of how you get all these people around the world who agree on these fundamental issues, how you get them to work uh, together without giving up their independence. Uh, you solve that question uh, and every single little individual issue and every single regional difficulty uh, can now be addressed uh, quite a bit more formidably than we've seen in the past. I'm getting tired of hearing myself talk, so if anybody has any questions, let me know in the next few minutes. Otherwise, I'm going to go back to my real work for today. Uh, to answer your question, will people participate anonymously? Uh, they absolutely can. Uh, this is an in, in, in encrypted system. There's no requirements uh, for participating that, requ that you know, provide for you having to give a name and all that. Individual pursuances may have certain requirements. You know, they can set it up so that, you know, in certain kinds of work, they want to know who they're working with. But on the, for the most part, uh, the kind of activism that does tend to get, uh, you know, pushed up against by law enforcement, by corporations, by private intelligence deals, they're going to want to be anonymous for the most part. And they absolutely can with this. So you'll have a mixture of people, uh, people like myself who participate in things, you know, under their own name uh, for different reasons, uh, as well as people who, you know, uh, are doing totally above the board activism work. But because of what's been found to happen uh, with the U.S. government and other journalists, uh, yeah, exactly. It's, it's self-regulated by the people who invite others. So every pursuance is regulated by a, a series of agreements that are entirely uh, – they're procedural, they're up to the people who, who have made those agreements. So one pursuance over here will be entirely uh, under the control of one person who for some reason people trust and they're happy to work on this person and give him control. So the pursuance next to it, entirely democratic. Uh, someone created it and then immediately provided, uh, made it such that every new member has a vote in whatever number of operations. And they even set up a platform, a, a mechanism whereby they can have a sort of constitutional convention so that they can change, uh, you know, with a two-thirds vote can change basic aspects of that constitution. So it could be used for self-government, essentially. A breakaway region, for instance, could use this theoretically to, uh, you know, when it comes time to set up an institution that's supposed to be better than the institutions they're replacing, uh, using this system of process democracy is what we call it, uh, they'll be able to uh, arrange for that, you know, in a way that's fair, that's, that's equal, uh, and that at all, at every single point, involves the agreements, uh, the the uh, the uh, I'm trying to think of a word, 
that best covers this. But anyway, the 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 the, the will uh, of everyone involved. It's not like an institutional democracy, like the U.S., where you have a constitutional convention by uh, 200 years ago by landowners, and they decide here's the constitution, and if people want to change it, they've got to get two thirds of those people to to do so, and they've got to do it jump through all these hoops. There's never a point at which that gets to be decided by some small oligarchy of people. Every single uh, aspect from the beginning of pursuance is, uh, again, involves coordination, involves agreements, it involves, uh, you know, agency of every single individual involved. And that's a fundamental difference, uh, not just with institutionals, uh, institutional democracies or governments, uh, but also with movements like anonymous. Uh, anonymous, for instance, uh, contrary to different takes on what it is, uh, to see what Anonymous was, you really have to look in an IRC network and see how that works. IRC network is an institutional structure. Someone owns that IRC network. Someone uh, is a channel operator, has the ability to ban others, and he has that role uh, because he's friends with that other guy or he's been here for a long time. But there was never a, a really a democratic way of setting that up but it does exist. There are these institutional structures in which you have uh, you have uh, power that exists that has not really been uh, agreed to. Uh, it's not really been signed on to by anybody else. But they but those structures do exist, even something like anonymous. That's the case with a lot of movements. Uh, so this is a very different way of approaching uh, all manner of human interaction. Uh, although we obviously focus on activism NGOs, but the pursuant system can be used to run your your hobbyist group, obviously. But you know we're not you know we're not uh, aiming for that. And the and the, the the nature of the people that we're choosing to start it off with obviously reflects uh, that's 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 when we get to kind of uh, set the seed and kind of determine how it will grow. Because although those people, those individual people. Uh, they make the decisions on who comes in next and so on and so forth. And so we very, we ourselves, as they got people with creating pursuits, lose control uh, as time goes on of the demographics. Uh, that con- that power is, is you know, collectively in the hands of all these individual participants. So it, it has aspects, it possesses aspects of a union, sort of in some ways, and a political party. Uh, even of a secret society that, you know, of, of the past, it used to grow by, you know, there's cells and each new person brings on new people. Uh, it has all those aspects and it kind of combines them into something uh, that uh, it's, a, it's a very modern uh, solution, you know, to, to an old problem, uh, which is the problem of how do people with no existing uh, relationships, how do they self-organize in a way that's fair to everyone involved in a way that's going to be efficient and dynamic and allow for growth further on. That's kind of the problem we've been trying to solve with this. And, uh, you know, hopefully we've, we've got it down. Yeah, uh, it's good to exchange information among common interests. Uh, and so, for example, you know, you have a group like Bikes for Africa, for instance, which is one of the organizations that back when Project PM first started, but before it became an intelligence contracting uh, crowdsourced deal. It was a. Uh, it was originally intended to build something very similar to this, but I, before I got distracted with anonymous and other things, uh, bikes for Africa. You have participants. You know, you have an existing institution that exists. They, one of them, is invited to pursuance. They create a pursuance presence for bikes for Africa. Uh, they set up all these structures. This person brings on two people he knows, puts one in charge of one aspect, the other person in charge of the other aspect, and gives them total you know, power over what they want to do. And so each, each of those people can now bring on whoever they want under them and decide if those people themselves can continue to bring on people, uh, if they can give them tasks, how those tasks are organized, uh, you know, and everyone you know, joining, joins with, a, with a, knowing full well how that's, how that's set up. Uh, and so when those structures are developed, then you have mechanisms for sharing information uh, within that group uh, that are a little bit more... Uh, Systematic, then again, uh, going back to the example of the IRC network full of 100 people, uh, you have a better way of uh, exchanging information while staying on task without kind of uh, becoming a victim to the tendency of people to gossip and to uh, socialize uh, when it's time to be, you know, working. Uh, Individual pursuances beyond that can collab, can build connections among each other. 
those connections, again, they can make in sort of a variety of roles. Uh, they can be information sharing. So this pursuance that's doing, that's trying to do prison reform, and this other pursuance is trying to do prison reform in a different way, this other pursuance is doing criminal justice reform. Uh, they understand that they have, you know, obviously common interests, uh, uh, potential to share resources, make better use of, uh, just of their own uh, participants, uh, just like any other groups. And so there's any number of ways that those three groups, as an example, could handle that. They can set up agreements whereby they share information automatically. They have like a, co a common uh, feed. Uh, they can share uh, individual members. Uh, if one group has somebody on who does design, but this uh, particular group doesn't necessarily need him all the time, uh, they can have that person also uh, work with these other groups. And that way, you know, uh, organizations, you know, that, that don't necessarily need, you know, somebody on full standby doing design work or coding or whatever, uh, you know, they can have that without uh, limiting that person's ability to help other things. And so on and so forth. Let's see. Yeah, options for microloan sharing resources. Uh, yeah, when I, so when I say sharing resource, resources, I've usually been uh, talking in the context of uh, or existing organizations do that. But there's also a way, you know, there's ways, for instance, uh, a number of people in a developing country could set up a pursuance in order to organize uh, the methods by which they collaborate on, you know, light industry. You know, a, a group of uh, women uh, in Bangladesh who are uh, receiving microloans, for instance, uh, could use this to decide how they're going to, they could, they could share amongst themselves if a particular member uh, needs help making a payments, you know, they could set it up in a certain way to make sure that happens. Then they can incorporate, on the outside, they can incorporate blockchain and all that. Uh, blockchain, I should mention, because we get a lot of questions about this. Blockchain is not incorporated into this. This has nothing to do explicitly with blockchain. However, uh, and there's a number of reasons for that, that, that Steve uh, Phillips, our, our tech guy, has explained. But however, within the pursuance system, any group can, can easily incorporate that kind of blockchain stuff into what they're doing. That's just something that exists outside of the system. Uh, just like they can incorporate, you know, any, anything else, uh, any other technology or aspect uh, sort of on their own time. So within pursuance, uh, there are a number of tool sets uh, that are sort of incorporated into the software and that are kind of made available and that, you know, uh, speaks to another aspect of this. Uh, you know, with needle exchange uh, groups, harm reduction uh, groups for, for drug addicts in different cities, particularly in Canada, uh, you know, obviously one of the, the basic philosophy of that is that you provide condoms and needles to at-risk groups, and while they're coming to get those things, you also give them pamphlets on other services that are around that they may not be aware about. You use that opportunity to give them, uh, you know, other items and information uh, to make sure they have all the resources that they, you know, could potentially have access to. Uh, pursuant system actually kind of works in a similar way in so much as that people who are using this, who don't have, don't have to be technical at all, uh, once they're in the system, we provide them uh, all these different sort of uh, encryption, security, and data collation devices that are very, you know, very high-end stuff that exists already, but people don't necessarily know about them. Uh, there's things like Transparency Toolkit, for instance, that one of our contributors, uh, a guy called Shadash out of Germany, uh, won a lot of grant money years ago to build. It's been very successful. It's a method for uh, originally used for uh, uh, sort of fleshing out, uh, sort of assessing ties among intelligence officials and private contracting companies that provide some of these illicit services to governments and companies. Uh, so Transparency Toolkit is one of the things that will be incorporated into the system. Uh, beyond that, we have end-to-end -end encryption that's, that's built in to every aspect of pursuance, uh, things of that nature. So activists right now who, as we have in the past, have been using IRC or using uh, Facebook or whatever, uh, and who are not entirely secure by virtue of doing so, not only will be the, in this more secure system, but as long as they're here, they're also going to be made aware of all of these other sort of uh, best practices and, and software that otherwise they probably wouldn't have come across. And that's just one more aspect whereby we kind of kill a lot of birds with a particular stone. And so, let's see if we have any more questions. Looks like... 
they're ready to be used and tested. Uh, there's a degree of testing going on right now uh, with a couple of uh, groups. If you're interested in getting involved in that, you can email uh, Steve uh, Phillips at steve at trying to be awesome dot com. Uh, he's in charge of the onboarding for that. And I don't know what this it, it keeps changing. They're obviously making a lot of progress and shifting the focus uh, from programming to onboarding. So he can, uh, if you're interested in getting started now. However, if it, I would generally uh, recommend that for anything really serious uh, to wait and just until we launch formally and then use it uh, for those tasks. Uh, simply because the testing is really, again, it's, it's for testing. It's really not, uh, it's very much as is right now. And uh, haven't quite gotten to the point where it's uh, necessarily worth shifting all of your operations on this new system. Uh, a lot of the features aren't ready yet. Task management software, uh, we showed off at the Aaron Schwartz Day event last year. You can see it on YouTube. Uh, both I, I'm joined by teleconference. Uh, Steve Phillips was there and explained a lot about how that task management system works. And that's something that's not uh, explained thoroughly on our website yet, but it's a very integral part of all this. And uh, aside from the sort of pursuant structure, this whole visualized network that makes it easier to collaborate, uh, this task management system, which works both within and uh, among pursuances, as in pursuances can share tasks and that kind of thing, uh, that itself is actually kind of very much an improvement on the very haphazard way in which, for instance, a group of Anons would get together in a chat room and try to assist the, the Bahraini uh, opposition, you know, uh, without necessarily having the organizational tools to make sure these things are done. And so, really I just made this because I wanted to test out my new microphone and, and uh, camera since I now have a reasonably high quality hardware here. So if anybody else has any questions, I'm going to go ahead and go. Thank you for watching. Remember, pursuanceproject.org. You can read more about this. There's articles in the New York Observer. If you just Google around, there's an article in Wired. Uh, it doesn't really, it was kind of before we, did, when I got out of prison, did not really, doesn't really go into the specifics of it since it was before we actually launched it. Uh, there's an article in Daily Dot, uh, and there was a thing on NPR a couple weeks ago that's terrible, and says that we're trying to foment global chaos, which we're not. You can ignore that one. Uh, but at any rate, there's lots of videos on YouTube about the talks we've given at different places uh, in the last few months explaining more about this and more about some of the nuances that will be of uh, interest to those who are already activists or thinking about switching some of their institutional functionality to this system. Okie dokie, thank you very much. I'm going to go play video games.